Hey guys, this is Nick and this is how to boot off a USB using an ISO into a Windows 10 installation. First you want to hit F12 a bunch of times and get into your BIOS. Um, go down into change boot mode settings and enable legacy boot so you can boot off your USB. Once you've enabled everything, uh, restart your PC, um, make sure and put in your USB so you can boot. Um, and then get back into the BIOS and then there should be an option there that says um, USB ROM or something along those lines. Um, click that and then you'll be able to move into the next step of installing Windows 10. So, yeah. Um, this usually takes a little bit as an installation. Um, you want to change some things. You want to change it to um, the language to Australia, English Australian. Um, it's a little bit up there. Oh, like scrolling up. Um, so then it's in English. You also want to um, change your keyboard or keep the keyboard layout as US and um, the other one is US as well. Um, and then next, and then it'll just start loading and setting up. And as soon as you get in, you accept the licensing terms. Um, uh, for my reason, I need to do an advanced options so I can clear out both the drives there because it's a re image because Windows 10 was already on it and we needed to redo it because there was some problems. So then we need to clear it and create a new drive. Um, the first priority drive, you wouldn't be able to put um, Windows 10 on it. So the second drive that I created, you were able to add Windows 10 to and boot off that. And this is just a standard installation process. Um, I'll just sped it up a little bit because it takes a very long time. Um, and as you do this, you know, sit back and relax for a little bit and just to try and you know just wait out and try and do some other stuff while you wait because it is a little bit of a long-ish process um, it's all and you know as you're doing some other tasks for you IT trainees as well and anybody working in IT and looking at this video obviously you can go through ticket system at work or whatever sort of system you have that you have to record what different types of tasks need to be done in the day. Um, just go on with that for a little bit and just come back in half an hour or so. Or well, it takes less than half an hour, but um, eventually it gets done. Sorry, it's a little blurry. Um, camera's been playing up. Oh, what I was sort of doing with my hand there. Um, it's a company policy to cover up any. Um, uh, webcams just so we know we can't be hacked and spied at all and it's already covered up so they don't see anything of us and now we're into the setup I'm just muting Cortana because we don't really need her um, obviously change um, your region to Australia or whatever country you are in just to make it simpler for you you want to leave this setting as is it's the keyboard layout you leave it as US don't need to add another keyboard layout just a small loading and then you get into what you're going to put it as so as a company we put it as a domain or a work PC but if you're doing this at home just use this as a home PC which is the top one or like a personal PC um, but it probably should have left it as home and just gone through it it would have been the same process because it just went to add to a domain because I didn't need to um, put in that username and password so I just add on domain um, you're going to have to put a username and password to begin with before you add it to your um, company server so then you can log in as yourself um, so then you just, um, just do a testing like an admin and then um, if there's a company password to use use it to log in so then your IT staff and admin can get into it um, later on if needed um, you want to disable Cortana, she was useless um, turn everything off except location because there is a couple of people um, in my business that like to check their weather so they um, so they can um, we leave that on so then they can check the weather or etc and you're almost done with the setup and it just does its final booting and installations and high and all that 
And then after that, you are pretty much done. Um, after this, you'd boot into Windows 10. Um, then, uh, if you were to go into add it to the domain, you go into Control Panel, um, into System, uh, go into where you'd see RAM, then change. Um, by this point, you should know that part and just add it to the domain. Put in a admin part, username, and password. I'm just not going to show it for private reasons just for company policy um, I'm not going to show that step but you should be able to just consult somebody higher up like a, a supervisor and then you're done hope you've enjoyed um, this little tutorial and I hope it helped at all um, and thanks for watching